So the, the next thing we want to do that is essentially the second half of the table of exercises, the list of exercises, is find our volume landmarks. And I, any graphical designers out there watching this will clearly know how perfectly I wrote the, the title there. But the volume landmarks, basically, what I'm concerned with is intra-session, what are the landmarks, right, per zone of intensity. So this zone of intensity, you'll notice this looks just like Prilipin's table, right? Maybe you guys have seen it. I just put random numbers in because the, the concept of Prilipin's table is what we're concerned with. identical replication of it, right? Because this table becomes different for every lifter. The individual differences of a lifter, height, weight, training history, age, life stress, all these things factor into what these numbers are, right? Technical efficiency, these things all play into what happens here. If you're, you know, six foot six, 340 pounds, uh, and you've been training for 10 years, and you snatch 225 kilos, if any of you are watching this video, uh, these numbers are gonna be different. They'll probably move further down this way, right? They'll become slightly smaller, because the sessions will be smaller. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, six foot, uh, or six foot, you're four foot one, and you're, you've been training weightlifting for, you know, nine hours, then these numbers will change. We're concerned with two things on this number, or sorry, three things on this, this scale, the two that are really important. The first is minimum effective volume for a session. What is really the lowest we can, the smallest amount of volume we need to do in a session to be maximally effective? If we're too low on this, or if this number is, you know, we're training below this number, we're in a place called maintenance volume, meaning we're doing just enough to prevent decay of that fitness quality, the fitness quality that's generated from training with these kind of intensities. And we're not gonna make progress, we're also not necessarily gonna lose progress, or lose gains. If we're above maximum recoverable volume, the session itself will become too fatiguing for us to actually continue training, right? We're gonna disrupt the rest of training if we continue on from that. So if you're doing these giant sessions here, then you're gonna end up you know, basically not recovering from that and the next subsequent sessions, you won't be able to, to repeat the work that you were able to do before, right? In the framework of weightlifting and this, the fact that the sport is so technical and the movements are so technical, these numbers have to also reflect the technical breakdown that occurs. So the reality is like, could you possibly do you know, 40 snatches in a workout at 65%, 70%, probably. But is technical breakdown going to start occurring to the point that that session is now, you know, you've, you're, you're getting better with skill here, and then you've hit that 40 rep number, or you know, say whatever, that's the limit, and it starts to drop off, and then these reps are so low quality or so mm. poor, you're just training bad habits. So we have to remember that while these are representative of the maximum recoverable volume, we're also concerned with where technical decay starts to be, or technical fatigue, sorry, technical breakdown starts to occur and, and basically damage our training uh, stimulus. We start to get worse at technique because we've trained so much. It's unlikely a lot of people are doing that, uh, but it certainly can happen. You know, when I trained with like, you know, the Bulgarian, like we would, I would, you know, the first time I cleaned up 160, I missed it like 30 times <laughs> in one day. Right? And so I was getting better at able to doing that, better at that, but like I just ingrained the same poor motor habit 45 times, right? Or 55 times or whatever. So understand there's, there's something there we need to be aware of. What we want to look at though, the important things is what is 
maintenance volume, because we want to know where is the least amount of training we need to do in order to maintain results. Where is minimum effective volume? Where do we need to start our sessions? And where do we need to end our sessions? MRV. And from the perspective of how these numbers play into what the, the number of overload sessions someone ha has is the distance, the ratio between these two, mm. okay? So what this tells us, let's say that we apply all the individual differences we have, we create a table, we look at where these different factors come in, we balance it out and we say, okay, here's some adjustments we're gonna make. This number is actually, you know, this number is actually now, uh, you know, 22, this number is 18, and this number is, you know, 16, and this is, you know, let's say five. So now these points are much closer together, right? The, the distance between MEV and MRV are now so close together, we have to uh, apply that into the program in a way that we manage the fatigue that's going to come from doing this with the fact that we don't have the ability to progress from this to that uh, in a linear fashion, right? It's gonna be really hard to go from, hey, week one we're doing 22, and week two right. we're doing 28 reps. So we need to adjust for that. So the fatigue management has to come into play. This ratio is really important to us, knowing where MEV and MRV are is, how close they are together, how far apart they are. An interesting point about that, if you look at the, the you know, as you train, as you get better at, at lifting, as you train more and more, your MRV goes up, and so does your MEV. And they eventually get to a point where they're very close, right? Let's say this person example. Super, super close. And then let's say you become a master, you become older, MEV now becomes maybe above MRV. Mm. And so you're basically just in a place where you're trying to maintain your abilities as they decay with time. Yeah. There's one way, special way, <laughs> to move those points further apart, right? Theoretically, you could detrain, you could do nothing and they'd move apart, right? You know, MRV would move down as well, but you might get a little gap. So if you took big times off, you might come back and, hey, I took six months off and I came back, I only do a few workouts a week, three workouts a week, and I'm coming back really fast. Well, those points move further apart. The other way is through steroids. <laughs> steroids will essentially reduce MEV and increase MRV, mm -hmm. right? That's why they're so popular. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, We've got our table, this is for an exercise, so this is for, let's say, snatches, right? We've got our landmarks where they belong, and we have our zones of intensity, right? So we now have a zone of intensity, so we'll call this one, you know, one, two, probably three, and four, right? We would then wanna take our table, and this would basically be, imagine to the left of this is the, the exercise name, right, so snatch. Uh, right, uh, so snatch for micro number one, micro uh, cycle one, week one, in hypertrophy, we're going to do zone number one for the largest magnitude workout. B, we're doing zone number two, or sorry, zone number one, and then this is where the idea of a concurrent system comes into play. We could do, based on what this person needs, we could do zone number one as well. This person could have all three of their overload sessions in the 60 to 70% mm -hmm. range, and that would be, if they need that much high volume training, that would be appropriate. Now let's say they don't need that much high volume training. We want a more concurrent program that has a multitude of these variables, a multitude of these zones within the program. We can change this zone, so we have our list of zones now, to zone number two, okay? It's the first time I've written a two like that. <laughs> But now we have a, a zone one, one, and zone two in hypertrophy. You could change this as well. You could have you know, any combo of these you want. You could have zone one, zone two, zone three, right? This looks a lot less like hypertrophy than like, you know, a secondary strength cycle or something. So again, like we did the sequencing of exercises, we'd also sequence the loading. So one, one, two. These are driving me nuts that I did disease. Uh, and then let's say strength, we have zone, you know, uh, zone two, zone two, and then zone three, right? And then so on and so forth. We can also change these 
week to week. So micro cycle one could be zone, you know, this structure, then it could be zone two, zone two, zone one, right? And I'm just giving examples because this is essentially a way to quickly structure, okay, how do we actually put the right intensities we want into the program, knowing what the volumes are going to be. And then mm -hmm. we build the program rather than from the top down and saying, hey, I'm gonna do 168 reps this week. We built the program now from the bottom up, deciding first and foremost, the most important thing, which is principle one, the exercise. Second most important principle, overload, where the, you know, what actual zones of intensity we're using. And then additionally, we know the volume landmarks. So you'd have, you know, not necessarily related to that, you'd have, let's do this, zone one, so now it's you know, 60 to 70% for 22 reps, right? And then same here, 60 to 70 for 22. And then zone two is 70 to 80. Obviously the zones wouldn't cross over like that, but I'm really lazy when I write, so, you know, and that's 18, okay? This gives us a total volume for the week, gives us the intensity, gives us the loading, every exercise is accounted for with an, an intensity and a volume, total volume. And would that Prolipin's you know, style chart change with the exercise? So yeah. maybe like clean and jerks sure. would be lower, yeah. snatches say, would might, be higher? The way I count them, I would count clean and jerks as, so like one plus one is two reps of clean and jerk. Okay. Right, so a clean plus a jerk is a clean and jerk. Okay. Right, I wouldn't use jerk as a separate movement category. So it's a little bit more funky that way in that you would probably have to change these numbers a bit. You could use the same for all of them, but then what you're doing is basically splicing things together, yeah. right? Because this number should really be the same because if you had, let's say, you have two of these tables for jerk and for clean, yeah. and you're like, okay, it's you know four in jerk, but three in clean, what does your workout look like? Right, if right. Line up. So if you're doing it by hand, you just make the correction. You're rounding it. Right? But if you have a machine or a software doing it, you need to actually like be able to structure it so it builds the right program. Those numbers can be different. You could have more jerks as volume in the program. But what I would do in clean and jerk is these exercise choices would change. So mm -hmm. I would say, let's say you're really bad at the jerk. We would start with like jerk. So most people. Yeah, so most jerk. And then you know the second exercise would be like clean plus jerk, you know, plus jerk. Right, so that's you know jerks by three, and then clean jerk jerk by you know it's three reps, right? Um, it, it equals three. Sorry. And so now you you look at the exercise like there's just more jerks in the program, right? Today, right. If it was cleans, you could have you know clean clean whatever. And then we have our list exercise, number of reps in the exercise total volume, mm -hmm. there's always rounding that has to take place, right? Three doesn't go into 22 evenly. <laughs> um, you know, don't worry about the exact number, right? Well, and like you were saying, the triple is like an exercise, right. the yeah, way so, you classify it. Yeah, a jerk for one is different than a jerk for three. A okay. jerk for one at 60% is very different than a jerk for three at 60%. Right. Right. The threshold for training sequence is so low that you end up in this, you know, usually maintenance volume. Right. So the other thing we would do is, you know, Pilbin's table, there's like a range right, three to six reps, and it's really broad. We would also create these same ranges, right, what are, what are the, the ranges we want? So three to six, you know, two to four, I'm just making these up, but uh, let's say one to three, and then, you know, one to two, okay? Um, we would look at this and say, within the program, it's very easy to build this and then be like, well, should everything just be three? Or should it all be fours? Right. You want to have some undulation, right? Not not parabolic, not <laughs> for Dane. Um, you know, undulation between the, the the days. So you can pick between three and six. What I would do in a program is essentially want I want to create some undulation. So the largest session, right? The largest overload session, maybe that's four reps. So I pick an exercise that's four reps here, right? Maybe it's like you know. Two cleans plus two jerks. Mm. And then for the second one, we want undulation again. So three, and then uh, two, right? So now there's four, three, two. There's undulation between those sessions in the week. One, to add variation to the program. And two, to allow us to sort of maximize the, the size of those workouts. 
because as we progress from this volume to that, from this volume to that volume, we're gonna add sets. We're not necessarily just gonna bump up a couple reps. We basically wanna do something that's uniform that makes sense. So you're, you know, let's say you got basically uh, four sets there. The next workout you might have five, right? The next week. The next micro you might have six, right? Or whatever it is, right? Uh, don't take these numbers super literally because I just literally just made them up. But yeah, you're gonna have a situation where you say, okay, we got four in the first, so we're gonna do, you know, uh, it actually be four, four by four, five by four, six by four for that workout, right? Right. And then you have some overload, you're building on the number of sets and then you get to where this is here. Would you change the percentages if you're going four by four, or five by four, six by four? You could do that as well. You could change the intensity, but I like to use larger, more broad zones, right? Because you're gonna go 60 to 70, but when I actually, you know, what you really probably would do in the practical sense of writing the workout to somebody, you don't want that whole 10% range to be there. If I'm using the same zone for every week, every microcycle, which we almost always do, then you might say, hey, when you actually write it 60 to 65, the first half of zone one, and then the second week or third week, you'd write, you know, 65 to 70. And it's just the way you bias the volume. So maybe you bias it at 60%, the next week 65, yeah. 70. Yeah. And you write it, you add a couple of kilos. When you're handwriting it, you have to do something like that. Right. Right, where you kind of maybe start here, because you don't want somebody to start, a lot of people will take a program and they're like, oh, 70%, that's what I'm doing. Day right. One, right, and it's maybe, it's fine, that's what I told them, but the reality is like, it might be something where they just, the, the application, the execution of that becomes difficult. Right. They don't have a chance to sort of acclimate to the training when they first start doing it, right? Yeah. And then, basically, this allows us to build the structure. With the technique sessions we talked about, these two, um, we would just be in this column, relying on those volumes, and then generally, we're gonna try and be on the lower side of this, right? So either here, right, or below that, like one, obviously you can't put below one there, but you know, you might have something like that where you're below those, those thresholds. Really depending on, that's really depending on what you wanna to try to do in that session. It's not super relevant, you're not gonna, you know, the total volume is more important, so it's not like super bad if somebody does, you know, whatever, you probably don't have somebody do 10 singles in maintenance volume at 80% uh, because that's a pretty significant workout. Right? Right. This number might actually be less than that, right? It might be like six. Mm -hmm. But you could have them do, instead of three doubles, do six singles, no hook, no feet snatch at you know 70%, and that's mm -hmm. a technique session for them. Right. right? So that's kind of the, the basic way of like applying overload landmarks to the exercise choices. Yeah. Do you think we could do, would it be possible to like, just write out a day or a week yeah. or something? Yeah, we'll write a day out. Okay. Uh, that should be, yeah, let's see where we are here. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's make these a little more, probably realistic. It's probably 12, but this is probably more like eight. And then, let's see, we'll call this six. And two's fine. Um, so, we would have like, Monday, I'm gonna do a three day. <laughs> uh, I'll do a four day week. Okay, Monday, Tuesday. No, no, no. Like this. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. And we're gonna do like this O, 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 T, T. Okay, so now we know overload versus technique. Gotcha. Session, right? Yep. And then we would put. I'm not sure exactly how to write it. I'm kind of writing sloppy, but uh, you know, our first zone is going to be one, uh, and then we say the second one is one, and then this is two, and then uh, this is just for snatch. So then we would end up with okay, this is I don't remember the exercise we chose, but snatch from the hang, you know, below knee, right? So then. Number two, I think, was also a snatch mm -hmm. from the hang, plus overhead squat, plus overhead squat. I'll also say that's one plus two, and I'll say this is three. I'm kind of making these up. And then uh, this was just snatch, okay? And then this was tempo, uh, and then this was power, right? So now we have our exercises, we know the overloads, and then we know, I remember this is obviously A, B, so the A, 60 to 70, 
because this is micro one, two, three, four, we're gonna say this is 60 to 65%, the first half of that, right? Four uh, percent for three reps times, uh, what is our MEV? Is 21 or 22, so it will be like, uh, what is that, seven sets. Um, and this number is obviously hugely inflated because I just made it up. <laughs> um, but then you get the idea, right? There's seven sets there. Micro two, and then we say tempo. Well, let's go this way, actually. Uh, this is zone two, so this is 18. Um, so let me change that because that's going to throw people off. These numbers are really big because so I just made them really big. This is actually like 15. This is 12. And then 90 is 8. And then that's 4 or 3. Um, we have here is like by three, by five, right? And then uh, snatch is in zone two, 70 to 80. So you got 12, and then our snatches, I guess we didn't actually decide the, the volume on that. Let's just call it two, right? Because we're at the bottom end of this. We go here is 70 to 75%, for two by six. And then here, snatch the overhead squat, is zone one, so it's 15, so that is 60 to 65 percent. And an overhead squat here counts as like a snatch rep. Yeah, so one plus two, so that's three, so again, by five. And I, I wrote really large numbers, so this is a very big program for somebody to start with. This would be for somebody who's probably like, you know, four foot nine and, <laughs> and right, like brand new. Uh, it's also super lightweights. Right? Yeah. But you've got the idea. Here's the overload sessions. The, the technique sessions, we're going to fall below that. So our technique sessions can be in different zones. I'd actually talk about that. The technique sessions can be in whatever zone we want, obviously, as long as they're within the technique volume. If it's hypertrophy and we start putting technique zones in these 90% ranges, we don't need to do a lot to maintain technique. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. That might be appropriate in some cases where you have somebody doing a lot of heavy volume here, but they need to stay in touch with somewhat heavy weights. It would be a little unorthodox or sort of strange, I think, to see like, hey, you just did five triples on Monday really light, and then Tuesday morning you come in and you do two singles at 90%. But in theory, it makes sense, yeah. right? It probably, it probably would have a little bit of a detrimental effect, I think, just on the ability to execute that well. But you know, we could do that if we wanted. What I would say is your technique sessions are generally gonna be within the next zone that you're probably playing on training in the next phase. Right, so our tempo snatches might be, you know, at 70%, right, or 75%, because that's the next phase we're moving into. If somebody's really far back from competition or the phase is gonna be really long, we can make our, our technique sessions lighter and keep them in the lowest zone, right? For me, I would probably put this a little bit higher, so it'd be like, you know, 70%, 70 to 75%, 4, oops, four, eight, so it'd be two by four. And then basically the same thing here, right? 70 to 75%, for, oh man. two by four. As we progress week to week, we add a set. So this becomes, you know, micro two becomes six sets, becomes, we bump to seven, this would become six. It doesn't have to go like that. It doesn't have to increase. Every single session has to increase in volume, right? Um, we could change the size of the set. So this week, we could start with doubles and the next week move to triples. And then that, the delta between the number, the size of the set and the total reps would change. So you don't have seven sets, you might make this three. And then all of a sudden you need, you know, right. whatever, uh, five sets instead of six. How would the zones change if you were doing that? Would you the zones do anything? would change because you'd still be in the same intensity range. Okay, and you just have people, maybe they would yeah. go the higher end of the range or yeah. something. Yeah, okay. it depends on what, what quality you're trying to train. Yeah. Somebody needs more, uh, you know, the reason you would increase the number of sets in a session is if somebody needed more, um, uh, what's the word, um, extensive like capabilities, right? If they needed to be able to do more training volume, if they needed more general fitness, you might bump that up, right? So in this example, like these numbers are were relatively high that I picked, 
but you know, this person might be at the beginning of a very long hypertrophy phase. So maybe the first, maybe there's two blocks in hypertrophy. The first block, we start with these kind of large numbers of sets with low reps, and we increase the reps, but decrease the number of sets until we get to the MRV ranges. And then we would have these large workloads that basically move them from pretty good technical work with low intensity, right, and, and low set sizes to relatively extensive work that has more general fitness qualities, bigger set sizes, and lower total number of sets. So the delta between the size of the set and the total volume in the session, if we change that, the bigger that is, the more technical focus there will be, the smaller that is, the more you know, general fitness qualities there will be. Okay. Qualities. So after someone has watched these two videos, what are maybe some, some takeaways you would leave them with? The biggest thing I would say, the takeaways are, create some kind of systematic way of creating a program. It doesn't have to be that it's perfect, right? Um, and, and when you have a system that's, that's built, you can play with any one of these things and tweak it. So you can tweak these numbers, you can tweak how you come to these numbers based on how you evaluate a person. You can tweak how you actually create a structure for a week or a day, right? You can, you can take the system and make adjustments to it, right? If you don't have a system, then you're basically just building programs one off, right? Mm -hmm. And then you don't actually know, hey, what can I add or, or subtract from the system and then get to a point where, you know, I can actually make a, a significant change in that. And I can measure it. If I have this and I'm like, hey, you know, I keep giving people like three overload sessions. This is a majorly big workout. This is, yeah. you know, off the cuff, right? You just kind of build something that's huge. But, you know, the reality is that you can look at this and be like, you know what, I'm, I've got, I made this workout and something's not right here. What's wrong? Well, I can look at one or two variables. I can look at this and say, hey, maybe these volumes are wrong, right? Mm, I don't know, I think they're right. Well, if that's the case, then maybe I'm giving them too many overload sessions, right? Like they seem to do fine intraday, but the overall workload in the week is too big, so I'm giving too many sessions of overload. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna reduce that to two and switch this to a technique session for snatch. Mm. So it's gonna be a little bit lighter or maybe a little bit heavier, but very low volume. Right? It's the same kind of things you do as a coach. It's just a systematic way, so you can always go back and look at it and reference, oh, okay, that's wrong because, you know, I can just tell it's not right. They're not making progress or something's going wrong. And if they wanted you to do this for them, where would they find you? <laughs> uh, you can go to uh, my Instagram, Max underscore Ada, and send me a message or email me at uh, teamada.com. Awesome. Thanks, Max. Yeah.